will say that you're not supposed to mix the Bible and the Constitution. But what you have to understand is Trump has never read either of them. <laughs> Jordan Klepper from The Daily Show has lately been on fire, delivering not one but two killer comic shows directed straight at Donald Trump. The highlight of the week came on Wednesday when Klepper zoomed in on Trump's controversial embrace of the January 6th rioters, showcasing them at his subsequent rally shindigs as if they were the guests of honor. Trump, in his trademark flair, has been on a crusade, threatening to dish out presidential pardons like candy on Halloween to individuals who carried their frustrations a touch too far at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th, 2021. He's not just talking the talk, he's doing it too, complete with a salute to the rioters as a special version of the national anthem performed by a handful of the jailed persons participating in the capital turmoil plays in the background. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the horribly and unfairly treated January 6th hostages. But it wasn't that long ago that the previous president's rhetoric wasn't at all like what we're witnessing today. Like all Americans, I am outraged by the violence, lawlessness, and mayhem. America is and must always be a nation of law and order. The demonstrators who infiltrated the Capitol have defiled the seat of American democracy. To those who engaged in the acts of violence and destruction, you do not represent our country and to those who broke the law. Klepper recognizes this delectable irony, delivering it with his usual humor in Wednesday night's The Daily Show monologue. I mean, look, we can't normalize this. Do you remember when he wasted three months of our lives being mad at Colin Kaepernick for kneeling for the national anthem? Now he's saluting rioters, insurrectionists, and even worse, acapella singers. <laughs> and the f***er didn't even take off his hat. But the point Klepper was aiming to get to with this piece was that Trump, a guy who's running for office once again and may perhaps be the next president should not be encouraging the individuals who vandalized the Capitol. This is not just a fight for how to remember the past. The people who did January 6th are trying to get back in power. If they lose, they'll do January 6th again. Hell, if they win, they'll probably still do January 6th again, <laughs> just for old time's sake. And the rest of us need to decide, are we just gonna let them? Are we going to draw the line at treason and tell them? But it looks as if this is precisely the type of tactics and language Trump intends on pursuing with this election cycle. He revved up another crowd staged in the heart of Dayton, Ohio, with a commitment to offer a lifeline to these defendants whom he's cast as the modern day counterparts of patriotic revolutionaries. They won an office and were on it. He announced offering relief to individuals he's termed patriots and hostages. This isn't simply rallying hyperbole Trump's vow as a thread in a wider narrative fabric he's sewing, linking himself with the January 6th Fedos as he cranks up his use of gloomy and occasionally violent imagery. Earlier in the week, however, Kerr performed another performance geared targeting the now presidential nominee for the GOP. This time, the billionaire drew the Daily Show host's notice with a maneuver that appeared to mix patriotism, religion, and business in a manner only Trump could conceive. I'm proud to endorse and encourage you to get this Bible. We must make America pray again. All Americans need a Bible in their home, and I have many. Kerr couldn't help but joke on this heavenly commercial coming from someone who has broken every single commandment. Many? 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 How does that thing not burst into flames immediately, huh? Yeah, Trump is mashing together the Bible and the Constitution like it's a Pizza Hut Taco Bell. <laughs> and I know people will say that you're not supposed to mix the Bible and the Constitution. But what you have to understand is Trump has never read either of them. The Late Night Daily Show host did not stop there. He couldn't resist taking a few more shots at this very honest, very real business enterprise. Trump getting into business with God can only mean one thing. God is going to end up bankrupt and serving a three-month prison sentence <laughs> for lying under oath. I mean, what's amazing about this is that Trump just made $5 billion on his new stock. Buddy, you're not supposed to be doing this embarrassing grifter shit when you're that rich. Just start a private space company like a normal billionaire sociopath. The recently published God Bless the USA Bible is inspired by Lee Greenwood's song, which Trump hits the stage with at each of his rallies, and has even performed alongside Greenwood at numerous occasions. With a price tag of a low, low $59.99 plus shipping and taxes, this Bible isn't just any text. 
It's a patriotic mashup containing a King James Bible and a handwritten rendition of the chorus of Greenwood's song, along with copies of the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, and the Pledge of Allegiance. And with fewer than eight months remaining before the big day, Leslie Jones plunged into the frenzy on her program. She provided recent surveys that were enough to make anybody do a double take. This sales pitch comes at a time when Trump's financial difficulties are more like a Shakespearean tragedy. The escalation overlaps with his own mounting legal jeopardy and more than $450 million bond his lawyers say he has been unable to finance while he appeals a civil fraud verdict against his businesses. Along with four separate criminal cases charging him with paying hush money to an adult film actress, mishandling classified documents and interfering with the 2020 election results. Because of this civil fraud litigation, where he's been proven to have overstated his fortune and fabricated documents to gain better loans and agreements, Trump's bank account and his assets are under attack. But today, the New York appeals court handed him a lifeline, delaying the collection of the massive amount if he costs up $175 million promptly. The lower bail has now been paid by the former president on Monday, barring the state from collecting his assets until the matter is decided in the appeals court. All of this is on top of a $992 million bond relating to assault accusations brought up by E. John Carroll that Trump posted last month. Yet, the God Bless the USA Bible isn't simply a single product, it's just the latest addition to Trump's ever-expanding economic empire. From unveiling the $399 Never Surrender. High tops that became the talk of Philadelphia sneaker con to venturing into the digital realm with NFTs in late 2022, where he reportedly bagged between $100,000 and $1 million from a series of digital trading cards that reimagine him as an array of cartoonish figures from astronaut to cowboy. Trump's knack for branding knows no limits. He's even turned the nostalgia of his administration into a commercial endeavor with volumes loaded with presidential photos and letters addressed to him over the years. While the company behind the shoes, 45 Footwear, also offers additional Trump-branded footwear, cologne, and perfume. But before anybody screams foul, alleging this Bible crosses the boundary between the holy and the commercial, a short visit to the product's website gives a disclaimer aimed to assuage such worries. The site goes to considerable efforts to proclaim the God Bless the USA Bible as a holy non-political entity unaffected by campaign connection. It declares strongly that the product is not political and has nothing to do with any political effort. God bless the USABible.com is not owned, managed, or controlled by Donald J. Trump, the Trump Organization, CCCC Ventures, LLC, or any of its respective principals or affiliates. Instead, it states God bless the USABible.com utilizes Donald J. Trump's name, likeness, and image under paid license from CC Ventures, LLC, whose license may be canceled or revoked pursuant to its terms. CC Ventures, LLC a business that Trump claimed owning in his 2023 financial declaration has a similar relationship with 45 Footwear, which likewise states it utilizes Trump's name, likeness, and image under paid license from CCC Ventures LLC, but those license may be canceled or revoked pursuant to its conditions. All of this points to a bigger plan of exploiting the Trump brand across numerous channels. Details regarding the financials of Trump's relationship with the God Bless the USA Bible remain under wraps, as queries concerning his pay for the license agreement and prospective revenues per book sale have yet to get comments from his team or the Bible's representatives. Trump's connection with his white evangelical Christian support base continues strong despite a lifestyle and past that dramatically contradicts with the morals one would generally associate with Christian teachings. His attraction to this group remains unshaken even after a noteworthy era at Liberty University, when he referred to 2 Corinthians as 2 Corinthians as 2 Corinthians raising more than a few eyebrows. In a crucial moment back in 2015, during an interview with Bloomberg Politics, Trump was reluctant to disclose his favorite Bible scripture, explaining, I wouldn't want to get into it because to me that's very personal. He added, the Bible means a lot to me, but I don't want to get into specifics. Trump's presidency also witnessed a controversial moment when law enforcement cleared racial justice demonstrators from a park, paving the way for him to pose with a Bible at St. John's Church, a move that drew criticism from religious leaders, including the Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Washington. Before stepping into politics, Trump was recognized for promoting a variety of items from frozen steaks to vodka, and even a company called Trump University, which eventually faced legal battles over fraud charges. But we shouldn't allow these theatrics hide from the very serious repercussions that Trump's risky campaign tactic may result in. There has been a very purposeful and extremely tactical change in Trump's vocabulary over his campaigns. 
Until November, Trump labeled the January 6 defendants political prisoners, subsequently shifting to hostages. This trend, combined with the rising usage of criminals to designate different rivals, as observed by the Washington Post, represents a worrisome turn in the GOP's politics. The idea that a prospective presidential contender is extending a shoulder to convicted criminals should strike warning bells for everyone. Let us know your opinions in the comments below and subscribe to the channel to remain up to speed with the newest events of the election season. Stay informed. See you all at the next one.